Thank you very much for pulling that up. Is it taking the full screen now? Yep. Yeah, okay, all right. So uh, I did talk a little bit about myself and, um, and the company here, but I'm just gonna talk a little bit more about some other uh, facilities that our company um, services that we provide. Uh, we're in 27 programs throughout, um, we have 27 programs throughout Minnesota. We're in 13 different counties. Um, the direct support professionals that we hire actually are for the adult foster care homes. And we have uh, 17 adult foster care homes. We also provide uh, residential and mobile crisis services, residential mental health services, residential substance use and co-occurring disorders, and outpatient substance use and co-occurring disorders. It's really a great company to work for. Um, you can really grow within your career with Thrive, starting out at the direct support professional level. Um, and so you actually can click on our website at, at some point when you want, you know, or you're interested and you can click on every one of our facilities and you can see a, a picture of the facility inside and out um, and then a description of what that program provides. And so um, just an example, this is one of our homes. Um, and in each one of our adult foster care homes, there are four residents living in that home. So this is an example of just the exterior of one of the homes. And then this would be in the backyard on the back deck. Um, it's always fun to just be able to sit outside. We do have some fire pits out there now since that's kind of the going thing. So, um, and then also, uh, here's a kitchen in one of our homes in this home and um, we do try we do make meals for the residents and some of the residents like to cook it just depends on um, their lifestyle choices and then we just try to make everything um, just really comfortable it's their home we want it to be very home homey and so the next slide is um, of a living room now um, in each of the homes we do have four bedrooms, uh, two living rooms, and then one room is the office. So they're actually uh, five bedroom homes, but one of those bedrooms gets used for the staff office for um, doing paperwork and shift notes and, and administering medications. So yeah, so some of the things we're looking for, the qualities that we're looking for when we're hiring direct support professionals are you know, on this slide as follows. Um, I just look at that girl's cheerful face and that's kind of what we're looking for, somebody to come into our facilities with that cheerfulness. So uh, reliability. We want to know that you're going to show up. We want to know that you're going to cover a shift that you're on the schedule for. It's really important for this, uh, the people that live in the home. And many of them don't have a lot of alone time, so it's important for people to be there. Um, punctuality. Uh, that's also an important piece that we're looking for. Somebody who can come in and relieve the next shift because it's time for them to go home. And also, um, the residents like certain routines too. And so they like to know who's coming in and if they're going to start the coffee on time. Um, and compassion. It's always important to have that piece, that element within us, that, um, uh, that feeling for another. And empathy, being able to put yourself in that person's place. Um, having a positive attitude that just makes the day go brighter for all the people living in that home. Um, we're there working. They're actually living there. So we need to come in and just and make it a positive place. Um, encouraging. So many of them are working on goals in their life or um, they just have certain things they want to accomplish during each day. So just being encouraging with the choices that they want, they're making. Um, and then also non-judgmental. Everybody has their own preferences and how they want to live their lives. And we just try really work really hard to not judge anyone and it's just to be person centered. Um, and we really are encouraged and um, are required to have a person centered approach in our homes so that we're focusing on each person's individuality, um, what's important to them and how they want to live their life. And so also in uh, hiring for direct support professionals and looking at this as a career, uh, we want people who have a strong sense of teamwork. Um, you're working with maybe eight to 12 people running one household um, and between the full-time shifts, part-time shifts, weekend staff and the overnight shifts and just really keeping that team strong so that you can all be on the same page providing care. 
and then being able to prioritize. You know, sometimes there's things that come up and we're going to have to maybe one day not do the dish towels laundry and we're gonna switch over and assist a resident that's maybe having a bad day. So just being able to, to make those, um, um, being able to prioritize. And composure under pressure. There, there may be moments when um, you're gonna have to shift gears and maybe a resident's needing to get medical attention and you're gonna need to, um, coordinate that person getting in to see the doctor, um, just staying composed during those times. Good judgment. Uh, just one example of good judgment. We're looking for people who are, um, you know, just thinking ahead. So if you have a resident who loves to go outside during the winter, but you see he's headed for the door without um, proper winter clothing on, you're just going to want to remind that person, you know, today it's 10 degrees out and you want to make sure they've got boots and hat and mittens. So just using good judgment in the situations that arise. Um, also the ability to juggle more than one task. It's like running your own household or in your own household, you know how sometimes things pop up. Um, so in our adult foster care homes, for instance, you might be making dinner for the residents living there and then all of a sudden the phone rings and you're the only staff on and maybe it's a doctor wanting to talk to you about one of the residents that he um, was providing services for. So you're just gonna maybe have to juggle that. Maybe you're cooking and you're on the phone. Um, so being able to juggle more than one task. And we're also looking for, and these are things that we, we grow into and we're constantly working on, all of us, no matter where we are in the field, um, but strong interpersonal skills. And strong interpersonal skills are the following. We're looking for uh, verbal communication, nonverbal communication, and that's a, a basically your body language, your facial expressions, also um, problem solving decision-making, assertiveness, being able to state your needs, and listening skills. All of the residents need someone to listen to what they prefer. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's really important for you to know if you choose this career as a direct support professional, you are the backbone of the quality care services in our homes. Uh, a DSP's observations daily care they provide, what's working, what's not working, including descriptions of daily events. That is the information that's utilized in program planning with the person and the person's support team. So your information is a big piece to um, how, how they get to live their life and how we can make it better for them. Also, um, direct support professionals are assigned tasks they are strong in. Um, I, I do give directives to our directors to make sure you're focusing on each of your staff's strengths and skills because your skills are the things that um, add to the lives of the people that live in our homes. So for instance, if we had a resident that loves outdoor, being outdoors and we have a staff person that loves being outdoors, we might make sure that staff person's assigned to that resident to you know, go for walks or a bike ride or you know, go to the park, whatever the choices are for that person. Maybe you like to cook. Um, there might be a resident that likes to cook and you could get together with that person in the home and uh, look for recipes. So we focus on your skills and we bring those skills into the home for the residents to, to improve their lives. And um, so, Direct support professionals really should be interested and motivated in the following. It, you have to have a desire to assist and support persons with life skills and teaching um, and reaching their chosen goals. They all have different goals. And then stimulating positive social interactions. Um, it's just so important to stay on that positive note, whether it's sitting down and playing a game of Yahtzee um, or you know going out and um, maybe playing some volleyball, maybe um, just sitting down and playing cribbage. Uh, we have so many residents that like to do different things, but just making sure that we're um, providing some positive social interactions, whether in the community or in the home. And then providing an atmosphere that will stimulate the person's self-confidence and self-worth. Um, I love it when I walk into a home and I hear a staff person cheering for somebody who just um, made their first omelet <laughs> or cheering for somebody who just was able to actually um, get their 
uh, coloring book colored that day, that morning. So, uh, and then helping the persons to build good memories in their adult foster care homes. You know, so many times people will move into our homes and they're bringing maybe some bad memories with them. Um, and just helping them to build some of those good memories, things that sometimes we take for granted in our own homes. Uh, I've had run into former residents and um, maybe at Walmart or Target, and they come running up to me and they'll say, hey, Mary, remember that time we made those special Christmas tree ornaments? So it's, it's those little things that we do. I love it when I walk into one of our homes and I see staff helping residents decorate for Christmas or Easter, um, whatever it is they're interested in. It's just, just those little things, just those special touches. And then uh, providing consistency in person's chosen routines. We all have routines. And you know, what my routine in the morning is I love to get up and I love to have that cup of coffee and I like to watch a little bit of morning news before I start my day, take my shower and then um, get going to work. So um, we just have to remember that when we're working with our residents, they have routines. We wanna help them keep their routines also. If we don't, it could throw them off for the day or the week. So, and then as you're building success as a direct support professional, the following are so important. Find a mentor at work, find someone you click with, you can ask questions, you can sit down and talk, somebody you can shadow so you kind of learn the ropes um, in, that, in that home. And then participate in the ongoing staff trainings. You know, we do annual trainings, um, but we also bring in special trainings if a certain house uh, person needs those trainings. For instance, we might bring someone in to uh, teach de-escalation. We might bring someone in to train on uh, symptoms of schizophrenia and coping skills, or there might be uh, someone come in and teach CPR. So just making sure that you are growing as a direct support professional by attending those trainings. And then being a team player, that's a big piece. You're helping run that household. Um, and you're with, uh, you know, maybe eight, like I said, eight to, eight to 12 staff in one house running that household. So just keeping an eye on things and communicating with um, your team members. And then focusing on the persons in the home, finding success each day. You know, we all need a little cheerleader once in a while each day. And so sometimes just focusing on those little things are so important. So anyway, thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. That was really interesting. And a 